welcome back to my youtube channel i hope you're all doing well and i hope life's treating you good so you might recognize this setup i did a video about three to four weeks ago now where i did my first ever deep girly chat with you it was quite long we had about a half an hour chat everything from regular sex to um the mindset to lose weight botox for lads and surgery the pressure at having kids and being confident in yourself the other topics that i talked about in the first part of this video and i did promise you i would do a second part because there were still so many topics that you had asked us to talk about which I never covered in that video so yeah it's part two I'm very excited for this video again it's going to be a lengthy one so get yourselves a cup there because we've got a lot of chatting to do a lot of talking to do and I'm really excited to have a chat with you about topics because I feel like this opens up a different side of us and you get to hear my opinions on things and we're going to have open discussions in the comments below about your opinions on these topics so I've got the little cozy fire vibe going on at my computer we've got my lovely candle lit and then my coffee is here started having milk in my coffees the last few days and i've always been a black coffee type of girl but more recently when i've been having a coffee i've just fancied a little bit of milk so we'll have a little bit of oat milk in today so i'm just going to get straight into the topics i have a list of topics here that you asked us to talk about over on my instagram a few weeks ago so that's what i'm going to be talking about i'm going to be telling you my experiences with all of the different topics and then i'm also going to be sharing with you um obviously any tips and tricks that i have as well the first topic that people asked us to talk about was depression and my experience if any with depression now i definitely have had experience with depression and i feel like it's something that most people will experience at some part in their life because things go wrong in life and life is never perfect and i feel like when things are going wrong in your life it can often lead to depression especially if you're not very good at handling your emotions or you've never experienced the thing that you're going through before then i feel like you can be led to be depressed about it so the main so i've definitely had on off periods of having depression in my life but the main time that i remember having quite severe depression was in school and when i left school in my first ever job now my main type of depression that i get and i suffer with quite bad is situational depression this basically is a type of depression that means you're depressed about the situation in your life at that current point and I also get routine depression as well which means if my life is following a certain routine day in day out everything's the same I get really really depressed because I do not like things being the same at all things constantly have to be changing for me and things constantly have to be being mixed up and I think last year my depression did start to come back during the lockdown because even though my job is very varied and I can do a completely different video every week it's still the same process of a job I'm filming a video I'm editing editing it and I'm uploading it so that process during lockdown became very very repetitive because all of the videos that I was filming were in my house. My depression definitely did start to come back during the first lockdown because I was getting really depressed with not being able to go out and see friends. Like everybody I feel like the last year will definitely be a time where a lot of people will have suffered with depression more than maybe they ever have in their life because obviously we've all been through a global pandemic, a global lockdown, people have lost family members and it's just been awful but I feel for me my main experience with depression was definitely in my school years I was really really low within my school years I absolutely hated school and me for me waking up to go to school every morning was so 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 depressing I would come home at night I would not do anything I would be just so depressed with the thought of school it ruled every other part of my life because I hated school that much and it's funny because when when you leave school a lot of adults will say like oh you know you look back and wish you were back at school and I've never once looked back and wish I was back at school because I just hated it that much and it has such a negative memory in my brain that it's something that I never want to experience again and I honestly feel like the school systems need to change change because for me personally having been in, having been through a school system in England I definitely don't think it's the best experience for a teenager or a child to go through I feel like there's a lot of aspects of the school system and of the school experience that can be traumatizing for kids and have lasting effects going into adulthood and I really just hated school so much after leaving school I've definitely had phases of my depression coming back like I said I have situational depression and routine depression so if I'm following the same routine for a long period of time then I get very depressed very down very um like I just can't do this I hate my life at the moment and for me when I'm depressed uh, 
one of the main symptoms that I get is just not being able to do anything at all. I lie in bed, I laze around and I just don't want to hear from anyone or anything and I just want to be in bed all of the time. It's not great at all and I'm not motivated, not motivated at all and yeah. And I feel like for me, I'm the type of person that's either really, really high, happy, energetic, or I'm really, really low down and just like not into it. I feel like it's very rare that I'm like the happy medium. Like there's not many days where I'm just like, okay, I'm either like good or I'm bad. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my experience. Definitely something that affected us more when I was younger and in my school years. As I've gotten older, I've definitely learned to be able to manage my emotions a lot more. But I know now, if I needed to, I would happily go and speak to my GP now if I felt like I was getting in a depressive state or anything like that because I've just learned over the years that speaking to people and getting help and seeking help is the best thing you can do and it is the quickest, easiest way for you to be able to get help and hopefully get out of the situation that you're in. So if you are suffering with depression or if you really just feel like you're in a pit that you can't get out of, please go and speak to someone, whether it be a family member or a GP. There is help available and hopefully you will be able to get the help that you need. The next topic that you guys asked us to talk about was marriage. So for those of you who may not know, I actually got engaged in 2018 in New York City to my partner, Sean. And a lot of people have asked, why are you not married? Why did you not get married straight away? Marriage was never something that I wanted straight away. For me, I feel like I got engaged quite young. I was, it was in 2018, so three years ago. So I was like 20, 21, how old was I? I'm 25 this year, 24, 23, 22. So I was like 22. And for me, that's a really young age to get married. It was never something that I was like, yep, I'm engaged, I'm gonna get married and that's it. I always kinda knew that I would have a long engagement because I knew that me and Sean would more than likely get engaged around that age. So for me, I knew that I would probably have a long engagement because there's no way that I'd wanna be married at this age. For me, I feel like we probably would have started planning our wedding if it hadn't been for COVID. But because of COVID, there's that much of a backlog of weddings that I honestly feel like it's probably going to be another three, four year before we get married. But honestly, like, I'm not too bothered. I do want to get married and I do want that special day of being married. And I do want a huge session and just a day that I can remember with all my family. But I'm not in a rush to have it. Um, like... Like I've mentioned many times on my channel and like I mentioned on the first part of this video, I'm not in a rush to have kids. So for me, there's no rush to be married. There's no rush to have kids. Like we've bought a house together. We just want to enjoy the house, go away with the puppies, enjoy our lives as a couple. Um, and yes, marriage will be an exciting part of that when we eventually do get married, but we're not in a rush to get married. So I don't know why other people say it is such a like big deal that we didn't like get married as soon as we got back and we weren't planning the wedding as soon as we got back. Because... To us, it was just never a priority we knew we wouldn't be planning it that soon because we knew we were still quite young. Okay, the next topic that you asked us to talk about was contraception. So I can only speak on one form of contraception and that's the contraception that I've always had and that is the implant. So I went on the implant when I was 16 years old and I feel like I'm one of the only people that can say I absolutely love it and swear by it. So when I was 16, I got my first implant. It lasts three years. It's just like a little... Um, plastic thing in your arm which releases hormone hormones and yeah I don't have to worry about having sex I don't have to worry about um safe sex because that just stays in my arm for three years obviously it's not 100% so you do still have to worry but I've never had any um like pregnancies or anything while being on the implant and it also doesn't protect against STIs so you will still have to use condoms if you condoms <laughs> you will still have to use condoms if you are um like being sexually active with lots of different partners or even just for one partner but you want to protect yourself from STIs so still use them if you can or get a test just to check that your partners are safe but yeah so my experience with the implant has been great not gonna lie I love it I've been on it since I was 16 I've constantly had it renewed every three years I went on the implant because my mum always had it she recommended it I went to like a little meeting with my doctor at the time of wanting to go on contraception and I list like the told us about all my different options and for me it just seemed like the best option personally I love it I will probably never have another form of contraception because it's just what I know it's just what I love I don't have to worry about taking a pill I don't have to go and get injections I really didn't like the sound of the coil when I was younger plus my friend Rhiannon got pregnant on the coil and I know it can happen with the 
skin plan but that's just like to me hell no hell no the only one that i can really say i've had experience with is the implant and my experience is good but current reception will vary so much person to person so definitely speak to your jp about what options could be best for you the implant could be amazing for you like it has been me but it could be awful for you because i know people who've had horrible experience with horrible experiences with it so it's definitely something that you need to speak to a professional about and make sure you know all of your options and yeah then you can make an informed decision once you know about all of the different types of contraception the next section that you guys wanted us to talk about was being in a long-term relationship so i've actually been in a long-term relationship i've actually been in just one big relationship all my life well not all my life but since the age of 16 right up till now 24 i've been with my partner sean so we've been in a long term relationship coming up to eight years which is crazy when i met him in the bus stop i did not think that eight years later we would be still together would have bought a house and have two beautiful puppies i didn't think that would be the way life is but it is and it's crazy um so in terms of being in a long-term relationship there's going to be ups and there's going to be downs especially when you get in a relationship as young as we did at 16 you're basically growing up together you change so much from the age of 16 to 24 like that is a huge change in your life you as a person who you are what you desire to do what your dreams are my life has gone from you know leaving school at 16 to doing childcare at college to then doing project support for my local authority to leaving all of that and actually being uh, social media influencer at youtube after the last three years which can i just say fucking crazy absolutely crazy that this is my job it still is my job and it has been for the last three years and my partner's my partner sean's life's changed so much within that time as well and we've experienced so much together we've been on amazing holidays we've been to lots of family weddings we've bought our first house like i said we've got our puppies we've passed our driving tests at the same time or more or less the same time like we've just experienced a lot together and for me that was kind of always what i dreamed of i was always so desperate when i was younger to be in a relationship and find someone that i connected with and with sean i feel like i really did find that i found someone that we have the same sense of humor we connect really well on our good days we have bad days where we don't but overall our relationship i would say we connect very well we're very like good together when we're having a good day and we know what each other wants and have the same kind of expectations of life from each other which i feel like such a huge important part of a relationship so for me being in a long-term relationship is something that i kind of always felt i would be more of a type of person to maintain one relationship rather than going from several and that's fine and i know a lot of people have asked us in the past do you not worry that when you get older you're going to be like oh well, you've never really experienced like much with anybody else but for me that's never been a worry because i just feel if you like and connect enough with the person you're with you can experience everything you want with them like i just think it's going to be amazing in 10 years time if we have kids and all that to be able to tell our kids like everything we experience together and there's going to be so much of that to talk about and that's something that really makes us happy and excited so yeah definitely a long-term relationship is all i know i've never been in any other relationship apart from this one i mean i had a few school things where i fancied people but none of them were either none of them were ever relationships they were just like oh i fancy you um so yeah that's all i know is my one relationship which has been a long term one and that's my experience on it obviously i'm still in that relationship so for me it's all positive vibes there's definitely negatives like getting on each other's nerves and you know i think sometimes as well you can be too comfortable with each other where you actually treat each other like shit and that can be a bad thing because obviously you're that comfortable you just sometimes disregard the other person's feelings not on purpose but it just happens because you've been with that person for such a long period of time and i think that's when you need to step back and try and realize that actually like you know you need to consider each other a bit more and you know we've definitely had bad periods but good periods as well and for me it's been mostly good i yeah that's all i can really say about it i've had a good experience but then i know people who have been in long-term relationships and had bad experiences so it just depends how yours is really okay and the next topic that i'm going to talk about is who bullying so school bullying is not something that I ever really went through, I would say to an extreme extent. I definitely got name called, so I remember like there was one thing in particular that always sticks out in my head 
and it was when I um and it was when I told one of my best friends in school at the time about a boy I fancied um I'm not gonna say his name because yeah I'm just not so I fancied this boy in school and basically I told my best friend who was actually really close to this boy. So she ended up telling the boy that I fancied him. I think she asked us at the time and I said it was okay because um, I kind of thought in my head maybe he fancies his back. Well, he didn't. And um, I remember when she had asked him or told him that I'd fancied him, his reaction was, oh my God, that fat wheel. And obviously now I post about being a plus size girl on the internet all the time so that's something that does not bother me in the slightest but as a 14, 15 year old girl absolutely heartbroken like mate if you watch this video if you know who you are if anybody who knows who I've talked about watches this video and you're still in contact with this guy please tell him not fucking cool don't be a cunt um, because that really traumatised me as a kid and like when I was like 14, 15 I was heartbroken like why did he have to say that why couldn't he just say I'm not interested like you're not my type why bring someone's weight into the equation it's like it doesn't make them any less of a person their weight so why bring that into the occasion and now I look at him and I think he's absolutely not my type at all um so yeah glad that one didn't work out plus he's an absolute cunt so I wouldn't want to be with someone like that anyway that was probably like the experience I remember in school of bullying apart from that it wasn't bullying because it never repeatedly happened it was just a few times that he called us it um or he called us fat in general as well but um yeah there was other times as well where like other people would make remarks about us being overweight or fat and stuff like that and I remember I'd skip sit in the school hallway in the hallway I'd sit in the school um like dining place what's it called dining area yeah, dining area, and I would be really conscious of what I was eating because I knew that people at school thought I was fat. And I thought if they seen us eating like a slice of pizza, they'd be thinking, you shouldn't be eating that, which is like so fucked up for a 14, 15 year old to be thinking. But that all stemmed from like people in school calling us fat, which, um, not great. But yeah, that's kind of the only experience I have with school bullying because like I said, I wasn't bullied um, or anything like that. So it's not something that I can like really talk on. But I was just kind of the middle person in school. I sailed through school. I didn't enjoy it. Um, but I was just there. <laughs> that's how I would describe my school experience. The topic that people wanted us to talk about is parents divorcing. So for those of you who don't know, my parents divorced when I was about eight or nine years old. So I don't really remember much of my parents being together, to be honest. I don't remember like much of them in a relationship. And my brother Brad definitely doesn't remember them in a relationship because he was like two when they split up. I need a bit of coffee. I've been talking a long time. A little bit too milky, that one. But yeah, so it's not something that I feel like I can talk too much about because I don't remember them being in a relationship. I always remember them being divorced. But what I can talk about is with the divorce, a few things that stick out to me is being the middleman for both my parents. So my parents have never ever spoke since the split up over like 18 year ago. 15, 16, 17 year ago, over one of them year ago, my parents have never spoke. They didn't get on when the divorce happened and they've just never spoke. So me being the oldest child always was used as the middle communicator for anything that my mum or dad wanted to communicate to each other. So that always annoyed us as a child because, for example, if my dad said something that I knew my mum wasn't going to like or agree with, I would be really worried to tell my mum. Sometimes I wouldn't tell her at all. Or if I did tell her, I would get the backlash of my mum being in a huff because of what my dad had said or vice versa. And that was something that as a child I always hated. And I kind of feel like it made us grow up a little bit earlier. Um, not really, but I did kind of mature that bit more quicker because I had to be that communicator and also as well I feel like I had quite a motherly role with my brother Brad because a lot of the time if I was at my dad's and obviously my mum wasn't there I would take on that mother role just naturally um just because I would <laughs> I feel like you know for me the divorce hasn't really affected us in many ways I used to get two Christmases every year um but there is like a few nitty gritty things that obviously I didn't like about my parents being divorced and I kind of growing up always wanted to be in a household that had two parents who had two incomes as well because money was definitely a struggle growing up so that was something that I always remember as well as like my parents not having much money and not like that's a bad thing because I was always so spoiled and so was my brother and they went above and beyond 
but obviously I know that it was a topic that was discussed a lot in the household was the fact that like you know we didn't have money and stuff so um you know that was something that I was always quite aware of as well but overall I can't really say that their divorce affected it that negatively because it didn't I was too young um and there was positives to it as well like having two Christmases so it's not all bad in my opinion Okay, so there are all the topics that you asked us to talk about. You did ask us to talk about bereavement as well, but I've done a full video on that. I'll have that linked below because it actually ties in with my death anxiety. So I don't really want to go too much into that again, but I will leave the video linked below where I talk about that. But that is everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed this chill chat video and I hope you enjoyed hearing my opinions, my thoughts, my experiences on all the topics. Let us know about your thoughts or experiences on any of the topics we've talked about today. And today's secret word is going to be sun because it's been such a sunny day today that it makes us really happy. So if you got to the end of the video, please comment sun. And without further ado, -ta -ta, I'll let you go and I'll see you very shortly for another one. Bye. A million people in the crowd.